Um, Manchester City, after Liverpool won, they needed to restore that six-point uh, difference. But they had to do it the hard way. They took on City rivals, uh, Manchester United, at the Etihad Stadium. And it took them just five minutes uh, to get going, uh, of course. And it was Kevin De Bruyne uh, who opened the scoring for them. And it was a very strange goal. Daniel, t talk me through it. I mean, they've gone out to tackle him. The tackle isn't great. It's got three United players who failed to stop Phil Foden. Somehow, Look, he squeezes the pass through and De Bruyne finishes. Um, if, 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 if you can permit me, let me just start my submission now and let the highlights roll. So that I, I, look, I think today's game was, um, it showed, three weeks ago, coach and I had a debate over here about what exactly the problem was. I felt um, the coach had a huge part to play, especially when it came to the defensive structure of the team. Mm -hmm. And he felt um, individuals also needed to take responsibility. I think today we saw both sides to uh, both sides of the coin. You look at that first Manchester United goal, um, the goal they conceded. Mm -hmm. I f I still maintain it's down to defensive structure and it's down to a similar problem we're seeing under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Mm -hmm. When the ball was out on the Manchester City left hand side, three Man United defensive. It was unbelievable ran. to yes. watch. And you see, then people start blaming somebody like Maguire. But if you ask yourself, whatever Maguire was going to do was going to be reactionary. He wasn't going to be able to stop the shot. All he could have done was maybe block it and hopefully the ball hit him and he's not going or, or whatever. But it was reactionary. All of them went on to that side. And that is very problematic. In, in sequences in the game also, you could see that players needed to take responsibility. Somebody like Fred. You don't, it's not the coach who will point out the player for you to pass to. Mm. Something's common sense coming. When you've been playing professional football for over 15 years, you should have a certain level of IQ and a certain level of intelligence. You should be able to see when a player wearing red is surrounded by three blue, uh, blue players. And you should be able to see when a player wearing red is free. Yeah. And you should, somebody, something should tell you to pass the ball to the free player, not to pass the ball to the player who is crowded out. And some of these things, yes, you also have to blame um, um, players. But, look, if you are going to win football matches, yes, you have to score goals, but your defence needs... Look, you need a solid defence. Manchester City played the nicest football in the league, but they've conceded the least goals in the league. 21 now. 21. Unbelievable. Look. No, 18, 18 sorry. 18, 18. They had they considered 17, 17 before this 18. 18. And this is, look, this is a, a, a mark of champions. You look at Liverpool too, the same thing. They've considered the second least goals in the season. So the top two teams are showing us that defensive solidity and defensive structure is very key if you want to win championships. That's true. You don't, when I'm saying defend, I'm not talking about throwing your body on the ground. and, and Not and, that kind not of that defending. Not that kind of defending. If, a if, structural, a structural look, defending. Yes. If you look at the work that Tuchel did when he came to Chelsea, you could tell that he immediately addressed that problem. Even somebody like, like Arteta, when he took over the Arsenal job, Arsenal are not, are not as easy to score as they were maybe in his early days yeah. as at now. He's sort of fixed that problem, you see. And that problem is not necessarily by personnel. The Arsenal team just looks a bit more compact and they are just a bit more difficult to break down. Yes, sometimes they, they, sometimes they concede, but on a whole, when you are looking at them, you can tell that it's difficult to score them. You look at a team like Wolves, Bruno Large, at the beginning of the season, they were conceding goals. All of a sudden, it's very difficult to score goals. Yes, they'll lose a couple of games, but it's very difficult to score them. And you can tell that when they are the sort of teams that when they take the lead, you know you are done. But for Man United, it's, it's very worrying when you see goals like that. And if we can see the, the first goal again, literally the first highlight, after five minutes, I don't see why the second centre-back should be joining uh, um, who was it? Wan Bissaka, and I think it was McTominay down on the right hand side trying to close down um, a, a Manchester City attack. It, yeah. it really shouldn't be happening. And these things, it's still down to structure, it's still down to coaching. Yeah. And I feel Ratnik has, has some work to do. Um, if there was anything he could have done, and you see, he mentioned this when he, when, when he first came in. He said the team conceded too many goals, yeah. and he'll try and fix that defensive problem. Yeah. Look, look at this. This is two players who are close down, two on two. Then Lindelof goes in, and once he goes in... That is three yeah, United that players, is three two players in no man's land. I, I don't know if I could come in here. Yes, if I could go back, let's go back a bit. Uh, yeah. This is where I again disagree with 
I disagree with. Pause the thing here. Let this me see. is absolutely down to the players. Okay. So just pause it here. Now look at Harry Maguire. Look at Alex Telles. So from the, where the ball is, there's no way Bernardo Silva is scoring from there. As from this play, who, who is the most dangerous player there? Maybe Foden and De Bruyne. It's Foden and De Bruyne. So Maguire here has Foden inside. Telles has who inside? De Bruyne, De Bruyne. inside. Mm. And if you roll it, you see Telles rather calling Maguire. Look at him. You see, he's pointing to Maguire that come and take, come and mark. So that he will do what exactly? So he will do what? This is not coaching. This is down to the players. Mm. Because you could, you could clearly see the danger. Okay? Because at this point, Maguire should be going, the, closing in on folding. folding and and tell you, us, what about behind no, Telles? Maybe, him, what about look, Telles? Because there was, the ball, there was Mahrez behind exactly. him. Exactly. But if you look at the pressure being put on the ball, there was no way Bernardo Silva would. But that's the point. Isn't that what Telles no, is preventing? Because the moment no, they switch no, to no, Mahrez... No, no, no. You see, let me show you coaching here. You, you as a defender, give the opponent... The difficult route to go. Okay. As it stands here, can we pause, pause, it, pause, it, pause here. it here for me? Pause it here. Who is closest to go? De Bruyne. Yes. So but but Mares too look, is in a see, very, very important. And I can place. tell you that if the ball, by the time the ball will travel to Mares, tell us. It's have a volley. I'm, it's com one. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. He could have turned and go and block the ball. Coach. If I'm the one, look, there's something we did in coaching. When we were going through the defensive principle of coaching, it was fundamental. Make sure you give the opponent the most difficult route to go. Mm -hmm. As it stands here, in terms of danger, between De Bruyne and Maris, Maris is coming from an angle. So that obviously makes his route to go very difficult. And that's where he scores from all the time. No, you see, if he's scoring from there, all the time. It doesn't erase the fact that his route to go is the most difficult route as compared okay. to Kevin Gra Look, that is So granted. if I'm the that one, if I'm the defender, as in Telles, yeah. you could clearly see what was he doing pointing at Maguire to go in. Because, look, the brother was on the blind side of Maguire. Okay. That you point had, is very well made. That the players' look, communication, so I, understanding look, of position. Can we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can we go back again so I establish my point? Just mm. go back to the footage. All right, the same first go. Here we are. This. Now, pause it here. Pause it there. You see, in attacking play, okay, uh -huh. you are always trying to either level equal the amount of players mm -hmm. in the box. So as it's attacking standard, players in the box. It's, it's too in fact, being, being equal to the, the number is actually dangerous. It's dangerous for the attacking team. You so have that, to be more. Look, that, that, is, that is it. Let me finish. So that is what you are trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once Lindelof makes that move mm -hmm. to go and help whoever it is trying to cross the ball in mm -hmm. without actually bro blocking the cross, this is danger. This is exactly where Manchester City wants you to be. And you see, I don't blame Maguire because Fred is in the box but Fred is not in a position to close down Foden, who is mm -hmm. at the near post. Mm -hmm. If that ball gets to Foden, okay, Ma um, Mares will make that move inside, and it becomes a two against one. Yes. Mm -hmm. If that ball gets to Foden, and Maguire doesn't close him well enough, it is still a one against one between... Yeah, them. at this point, exactly. Mares is already in the so box. So once Lindelof moves in, it, it, it leaves Maguire in two minds. Should he go and close down Foden, leaving space there, or should he wait for the cross to come in and hopefully try and block it. So I'm saying, fundamentally, the first mistake is made by Lindelof to go in there. Agreed. And you see, no, you see, that is my point. That's, that's why I use the word reactionary. A team like Chelsea, a team like Manchester City, you will not have your second centre-back going in. They will make room for another defense. When I say, you see, when I say defense, actually, player, a defensive midfielder should be happy. No, yes, no, and that is, is, that is what. Is it? Look, let me establish the point. Yeah. That is what McTominay is doing there with yes. M1 Bissaka. That is a two against two. That's what so you are either be. stopping the cross, mm -hmm. or if the cross comes in, you have your centre back in position yeah. to stop the cross. So if those two guys cannot stop the Manchester City cross, Lindelof has no business moving in to help. But that, you see, that's what I'm saying. When you see these patterns repeat themselves over and over and over again, you cannot help but tell that there's something that is not happening yeah, because at the, the players, ground. Obviously, the coaches should have spotted. Yeah. I think that's Daniel's that's, point. That's, that's, listen, that's, listen, that's yeah. my point. But we coach, are saying the worry. same thing. Yeah, you are. You are, you are, you are. But we I'm need saying to take that, a break. I'm saying that yes. if you go back to the sequence again, the Manchester City player who played the ball with uh, Bernardo Silva, by the time Lindelof went in there to make it a 3v2, mm -hmm. 
the second Manchester, play, uh, Manchester player had gone into an offside position. Mm. Go back. So he was completely. Yeah. So that's now three against one. one. So that's now three against. But they before, still couldn't cross. No, stop no, the cross. Before it became three v one, he was active. So for you, so it people, is a player issue, for me, not a structure issue. issue. All right, that's fair. If you are pointing, if you are telling your player, look at him. What you going to take the responsibility? That's, that's a fair point. All right. Anyway. <laughs>